Unit 6, harmonic motion, largely covers periodic or just repeated motion. There's really three topics that are covered by harmonic motion. The first one would be called Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law can be given by equation opposite of F is equal to KX, and it applies largely to spring systems. Let's set us up a horizontal spring system. Let's say you have a spring and you have a mass attached to the spring, and you compress the spring down and then secure it in place, either with a pin or perhaps your hand or whatnot, and we allow the spring to, to stay in here. Uh, what is the amount of force acting on the system? Well, the amount of force is directed opposite our applied force. That's what that negative sign means there. We would call that force specifically in most inst instances for Hooke's Law a restorative force. Cool. K being the spring constant, and X being the distance by which our spring has been stretched or compressed. So in this case, what's the amount of force being applied to this system? Well, the amount of force applied to this system, given as a restorative force, is equal to K times, uh-oh, here we go, D minus D naught. Because X isn't D, or D naught, it's the difference between those two. That is the distance by which we have um, compressed the spring in this instance. Let's say somebody's hand is, a, is applying a force to hold this block in place right now. If we were to build a free body diagram of what's going on, it might look something like this. Yeah, yeah, sure, you got your force of gravity, you got your normal force, but then you have two horizontal forces. Perhaps we're pushing it this way with our hand, and then we have that restorative force being supplied by the spring. If we were to suddenly let go of this system, logic dictates that it would then travel rightward. That's what that negative sign means there. Once again reiterating, restorative force. If you were to build an x and y plotted axis describing the rate of applied force versus the amount that we have compressed the spring, it would look something like this. All right, force versus, let's say, length of spring. As our force goes up, then our spring length must go down. Like this. All right, and let's just think about this logically. The more force we apply, the spring can shorten. We can probably take this graph all the way up to here, but then we'd have to stop, because if you think about what's happening, if we go negative over in this realm of the graph, there's no more spring. There can't be negative spring. And then if you think about what's really neat is if we pull it this way and then go below the um, go below the x-axis, well, what's happening over there? Well, what's happening over there is that the spring is being now stretched and you're now pulling on the spring. The slope of that graph um, is going to be equal to your spring constant k such that if you had points, points on that graph for length of spring and the applied force, you could go ahead and solve for the slope and therefore the spring constant for whatever spring you happen to be studying by doing that, oh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, although it would look like f2 minus f1 is equal to x2 minus S x1. The second topic that we cover in harmonic motion is the mass spring equation. It looks like this. T is equal to 2 pi times the square root of the mass, mass given in kilograms, over the spring constant, K. T refers to the period of motion. Let's say that we're holding a block in place, holding it in our place with our hand, um, and we're at a distance here of 2 meters. And let's say that we release this block in a frictionless system such that it never really slows its rate of periodic motion. Let's say that it oscillates going back and forth between a distance of 0.5 meters to a maximal displacement of 0.2 meters. And then consider this a reference point of zero. What would that graph look like? Well, it would look something like this. Okay, so you have a maximal position value of your graph of probably 2. And you have a minimum position value of, um, of 0.5, both in meters. And your position versus time graph, since you're beginning from 2, probably oscillates 
at a rate like so. Demonstrated with a graph, we can probably make it look something like this. Now this is the shorthand way of doing it. These aren't by means any means great graphs, but it's pretty descriptive for what's going on. And now using our graph, we can decipher what the period of motion would be. The period of motion is basically adjacent points or between adjacent troughs, or perhaps between adjacent crests, or perhaps if we draw a line of origin like so, one complete crest and one complete trough like so. Either way, essentially the wavelength of that wave is equal to the period of motion, which is how we would grab the period value. And honestly, the rest of these questions are a lot of, well, now that you know the period value, solve for mass using algebra, or now that you know the period of value, solve for the spring constant k using algebra. And the algebra is pretty weird, but I think you can get it under your belt pretty quick. The final topic covered by harmonic motion is a very specific instance of harmonic motion. That would be our pendulum. You're probably familiar with pendulums. You take an object attached to a string, a massless string more likely than not. You bring it to an elevated position and then release it and have it go back and forth in a repeated manner. The pendulum is governed by this equation over here. The period of motion is equal to 2 pi times the square root of the length of string over the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, in that case 10. These uh, questions are typically pretty easy to handle. Let's say that we have a motion sensor that's recording your motion, and then we can interpret another quick graph, position versus time. Let's say that we pulled the object to this initial position over here. We'll call this position A, and then released it from rest. On that position versus time graph, you would be at the maximal position away from the motion sensor, and you would oscillate position versus time, pretty close to that motion sensor, farther away from that motion sensor, like so. Once again, grab your period value, whether it's crest to crest, trough to trough, or just one complete crest and one complete trough, and then use that period value in order to solve for, uh, more likely than not, they'll probably be asked you, you'll probably be asked to solve for length, L. Unit 6, Harmonic Motion.